the derivative of sine and cos 5.4 um, okay so the derivative of sine and cos are going to be very very straightforward i'm just going to go straight into the derivative if y equals the sine of x then y prime equals cos x and that's it that's the derivative of sine x i'm going to write the derivative now for cos x if y equals cos x, then y prime equals negative sine x. Okay, so be careful with that negative. When you're going from cos to sine, um, we add that negative. When we go from sine to cos, we do not. Okay, so let's go right into some examples. I want to differentiate... Um, let's go with question A is going to be y equals cos 3x and B is going to be uh, x sine x. All right. So cos 3x. First of all, we find the derivative of cos, which is sine. So I'm just writing negative, sorry, it's negative sine, negative sine of 3x. But just like every function, inside the function, we have to find the derivative. We always have to use chain rule. Um, do not let that elude you. So this is just times 3. So I can rewrite this. Sorry, this is prime. Negative 3 sine of 3x. And this is my first derivative of this question. Okay, next. Oh, just uh, actually to say something here. This is not product rule. This is not cos times 3x. So please don't think that's product rule. Whereas this is product rule, this is x times sine x. So if I'm doing the first derivative, I have to do the derivative of the first thing, x is just one, times the second, sine x, plus the derivative of this, cos x, times this, times x. It's not x squared, be careful. Okay, so this is just y prime, I'm gonna clean this up. This is sine x plus x cos x. And I could have written that to begin with, should have just been a one line answer. And that's the derivative of these easy questions. And now we're gonna go on to some more difficult questions. Okay, slightly more complicated, but not too difficult. We're gonna find the derivative just with a binomial as the function inside a function, um, but nothing else really changes. So we're finding the derivative of cos of one plus x to the three. This is just like cos of x, right? And the derivative of cos of x is sine of x, but x is this, so no problem. Now I have to find the derivative inside the function and multiply it. This is just 3x squared. So I can finalize 3x, sorry, squared. Squared 1 plus x3. And this is done. Okay, next I brought back the uh, e value, the Euler's number, and I'm going to use sine and cos inside this function. So my first derivative, remember the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So nothing is changing here. And I have to multiply it by whatever is inside the function. So I have to find the derivative of sine x plus cos x. I'm going to multiply it right here. The derivative of sine x is cos x. The derivative of cos x is sine x. Running out of space there, so I'll conclude down here. So e to the sine x plus cos x times cos x minus sine x is my final answer. Okay, so these are pretty straightforward. I mean, we know how to do derivative from pre previous chapters. Um, the only thing we're adding here is sine and cos and, you know, Euler's number or exponential functions. So they're just new skills, um, but the process of finding the derivative, especially that chain rule, um, is the same throughout the, every chapter, pretty much. Okay, so the final question in this section um, is going to be finding the equation of a tangent to a graph at a particular point. Okay, so when we have a scenario like this, we have to find the equation of a tangent. We need slope. We need technically the y-intercept, and that's the equation of a tangent. So the first thing we've got to do um, is find the derivative, but I could also find the point of tangency because wherever this is, um, however this function looks, I need to know that if it's at pi over 2, I want to find what the y value is at pi over 2. So I know that this point of tangency 
pi over 2 and f at pi over 2. It's too small in there. f at pi over 2 um, is going to come in handy when I have to find that equation of the line. Okay, so at x, at pi over 2, we just plug it in. Plug this into my x values. I get pi over 2 cos of 2 times pi over 2, also known as pi over 2 cos pi. Cos pi is negative 1, right? The horizontal distance of pi for cos is negative 1. So this is just negative pi over 2. So my point of tangency is pi over 2, negative pi over 2. Okay, that's a point on this graph of where I'm finding the slope of this tangent. So now when I find the slope of the tangent, I'll do that right here. I can use that point to substitute. All right, so slope of the tangent. Y prime. Y prime, I'm going to look here. This is product rule. The derivative of the first thing, 1. Derivative of the second, cos 2x. Plus the derivative of the second, sine 2x times 2 times x. So this, cos 2x, I'm going to bring the 2x in front. Um, sorry, this is negative sine of 2x. Derivative of cos is negative sine. So now this changes to a negative. 2x comes in front and sine of 2x. So this is my derivative. Okay, so now I want to plug in pi over 2. So at pi over 2, I want to find what the slope of the tangent is at this point. Because when I have the slope at this point and the slope of tangency, done. I can find the equation of that line. So at, at pi over 2, y prime is cos 2 times pi over 2 minus 2 pi over 2 sine of 2 pi over 2. All these half pi's are gone because it all doubled. Cos pi minus pi sine pi. Okay, blah, 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 put in your calculator. Um, you're going to get negative 1. Okay, that's negative 1. Um, that's 0, so done. Y prime, sorry. Slope of the tangent is negative 1. So now I'm going to use my slope. Y equals negative 1 X plus B. And I'm going to replace X and Y with the point that I know. I only know one point, the point of tangency. So I can say negative pi over 2 equals negative pi over 2 plus b. These are the same, which means there's no y-intercept. It's 0. Therefore, equation is y equals negative x. Done. Okay. I plugged in my point of tangency. I realized that if I bring this over, I'm going to get 0. So b equals 0. I can put plus 0 here, but obviously I would never do that in my entire life. Okay, and that's it. Finding the slope of the tangent for a trig function is just as easy um, as we've been experiencing in the previous sections.